the Spreaker podcast player app. Face Palm America, I'm Beowulf Rocklin, facepalmamerica.com. Lloyd Doggett, a profile, I believe, in courage, the only elected official in the Democratic Party so far to have stood up and publicly said that Joe Biden should withdraw from the presidential race. Doggett, who represents an Austin-based district in Texas, and is serving his 15th term in Congress, I represent the heart of a congressional district once represented by Lyndon Johnson, Doggett said, who is the number two Democrat on the powerful House Ways and Means Committee. You notice they always precede House Ways and Means Committee by powerful. It's always the powerful House Ways and Means Committee. I mean, I know it is a powerful committee, but is, is there no other way of describing it? Couldn't it be almighty? Couldn't it be valiant? But it's always the powerful House Ways and Committee. I, I think we should open up the House Ways and Means Committee to other journalistic adjectives. Don't you think? <laughs> anyway, Lloyd Doggett continues, under very different circumstances, he made the decision to withdraw, and he's talking about Lyndon Johnson, whose former district he represents. President Biden should do the same. And, you know, he is referring there to 1968, when Lyndon Johnson saw the writing on the wall, saw the, the challenges that Eugene McCarthy and Robert F. Kennedy were uh, bringing and saw how unpopular the Vietnam War was, and he decided not to run again for president, which he could have done. He, he was a far stronger candidate, frankly, than Joe Biden is at this time. But he still made that decision because he knew it was uh, the right thing to do. And if it hadn't been for the fact that RFK was assassinated in, in June of that year, Um, There probably would have been a Democratic president, Kennedy, and Nixon would never have gotten to the White House. Beyond the White House, control of both chambers of Congress is also hanging in the balance in November, and that's a really good point. This is not just about the presidency. It's also about the Senate. It's also about the House. If Biden keeps going and does poorly, he's going to drag those races down. He's going to make other Democrats perform more poorly. Democrats hold the Senate with a slim 51 to 49 majority. And from as best as I can see, uh, I I don't think there are too many things that are going to keep them in in power in the Senate. I think almost certainly the Republicans are going to take over the Senate unless they do surpassingly well. Which, if you pick a good, vibrant candidate at the top of the ticket, there is actually a chance for. Republicans control the House by only a handful of seats. And I think that the Democrats will probably win the House of Representatives back. But again, if Biden drags candidates down, depresses turnout, then that might not happen. And then there might be absolutely no bulwark, legislatively speaking, against a Trump presidency. That would be critical if Trump did gain the Oval Office again. Doggett's explosive statement came minutes after former House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said she believes it's a legitimate question whether Biden's halting performance is just an episode or whether this is a condition. So even Nancy Pelosi, who I have a lot of problems with, as you know, is saying it's a question. It is a question. We cannot just fall in line and say, well, it's, it's Biden no matter what. It's blue no matter who. This is important, and it needs to be hashed out, and it's critical that we make this change. And here's something at the end of this article that really kind of depressed me. And unfortunately, it's about Bernie Sanders. 
And I've, I, I've supported Bernie Sanders a couple of different times for president. And I, th- I think this is sad. Senator Sanders, Biden's one-time Democratic opponent, said Tuesday that while he's not confident the president can win in November, he's not confident the president can win in November, he doesn't want him to step aside considering what the party views as the greatest threat to democracy in Trump. And that, that really depresses me. Because if you're not confident that the guy can win, then you must ask him to step aside. I, I'm afraid that that Bernie has become, at this point, a little too comfortable, and and this depresses me. I, I think he, I think he's wrong. I think that is the reason why you have to get him to step aside because he's not confident that he can win in November. Bernie Sanders knows that he doesn't think that Biden will win, but he's going to stick with him anyway. That's that's foolish. That's foolish. It's Especially now, especially with all this nonsense that Trump is going to put in place with Project 2025, authoritarianism is is taking tangible shape in front of us, and, and yet you don't want to make the change in order to avoid it. You must. You have to. This This is the best chance to stop it. All right. I said that we were going to Read some messages that you listeners had uh, sent in to us. And we are going to do that now. Um, We have opinions on on both sides of the should President Biden step down from the presidential race. Not step down from the presidency. He'll leave on, on January 20th. Or he can do that. Assuming he's not elected, which I don't think he will be. He should step back from the presidential race. He should leave the presidential race. Bob in San Jose, here is what uh, he says on the matter. Please look into that Gish Gallup debate tactic because that was what Dictator Don was doing. Now, uh, Bob makes a good point there. The Gish Gallup, and I've seen this uh, referenced uh, numerous times on social media in the wake of the debate performance, is a tactic whereby... The person engaging in a debate quickly throws out an overwhelming number of quote-unquote facts, which are actually lies or misleading, and overwhelms the ability of any debate opponent to cogently respond to them, you know, flooding the zone, just overwhelming, giving the opponent too much to deal with. And that is certainly what what Trump was doing. The gish gallop. Something to add to your political uh, dictionary if you've not seen it uh, already online. Bob from San Jose continues. Meanwhile, I am not ready to throw Joe Biden under the bus. He was not my first or even my second choice back when, but I do know what Project 2025 is and what Agenda 47 is. And if Trump manages to actually win the vote in the few battleground states that will determine the election, the Electoral College idea is one of the worst things the people who actually wrote the Constitution gave us. Couldn't agree more on that, Bob. I know they did it to please the slave states and entice them to be a part of the new country. They made several other mistakes, but that Electoral College idea was one of the worst mistakes we are still stuck with. Again, that's Bob from San Jose, California. Uh, Bob, you make some good points. Um, I I don't agree with you on Joe Biden specifically. I I do think he has to go, but I I understand your concerns. I believe that what you're outlining in terms of Project 2025, the, uh, the retribution which Trump will enact if he gets in office is the very reason why we have to switch at this point and go with someone else aside from Biden. Another message, and this one from Jack in New Jersey. He says, I have been an avid Biden fan. 
Although I had voted for Bernie Sanders, once it was Biden, I was all in. I was pleasantly surprised with all of Biden's accomplishments, from handling of COVID to all the bills that have gotten passed. I believe they were accomplishments accomplished because of Biden's decades of experience in Congress and the fact that he is generally a very good person. I love Obama, but was disappointed with the limited achievements he had during his presidency. I blame that on the brick wall he hit in Congress with conservatives and the new Tea Party. That brings me to progressive Democrats. I consider myself a progressive Democrat, but the fact is fear has driven me closer to the center. Not because my ideology has moved, but because I have been afraid the progressive ideas are unachievable with our current system due to gerrymandering and the Electoral College. (laughs) You, Jack from New Jersey, and Bob from San Jose, California, absolutely agree on that point, and so do I. The Electoral College is an albatross around our collective necks. I must put aside my fears, Jack continues. This year... We are going against Trump. So many don't even need a candidate they love. They just need a solid candidate to vote against Trump. The Republican Party is a hot mess. So this is the time to put up a very progressive ticket. One that those in fear will learn to love when they see what progressive policies can continue to do for this country. The fact is, this country as a whole, has almost always fared better in every facet when progressive policies are enacted. I still have great respect for Biden and his accomplishments, but the debate proved he cannot continue. We must act now to replace Biden. We can choose a very progressive ticket because any solid ticket should be able to beat Trump. That's right! If... If Bernie Sanders, in spite of my criticism of him a moment ago, were to jump in the race, he would be overwhelmingly supported. There were there were tons of people who supported who supported Bernie Sanders, and when their progressive uh, populist alternative was taken away, they either didn't vote or they voted for Trump. And we have to acknowledge that there are such people. even even though we might not agree with their choices. We will have the help of many in the Republican Party that will not vote for Trump. And that's true. That is true. If we could provide a more viable alternative than Biden to Trump, then moderate Republicans would also gravitate more strongly to that new candidate. Courage is our friend. Fear is is our enemy. Thank you, Beowulf Jack in New Jersey. Jack, thank you so much for listening to the show. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much uh, for writing, and um, I couldn't agree more with your thoughts. I understand where you've come from, and it is not easy to overcome that fear, because... (laughs) How many times have we, we told this to conservatives? Or thought, you know, oh, those poor conservatives. Yeah, I get it. Change is hard. Well, we got to remind ourselves of that now. Change is hard. And when we step out into the ether without a net, there's always a chance that we could fall. But sometimes that's the only thing that we can do. And sometimes that's the best chance that we have is to make that leap of faith. And so I'm going to say it again. For the second show in a row, Joe has got to go. It's not looking any better a week later. Just because he got mad and seemed energetic reading some words off of a teleprompter doesn't mean that he didn't make the impression that he did during that debate. And it doesn't mean that (laughs) the, the evidence of our eyes don't betray the, the true state of Joe Biden's faculties. Joe has got to go. I want to thank you for listening today. Again, if you want to contribute anything via message or via voice, please do so at 202-656-6271.
I'm Beowulf Rockland, and until next time... <laughs>